Ashley Freeman and Loria Bible were lifelong friends. In fact, they had been best friends since kindergarten. They were once described by Loria's mother as the type of people who were so close and knew each other so well they could finish each other's sentences. And that was why, on December 30th, 1999, Ashley and Loria wanted to be together. Ashley Freeman had just turned 16 and she'd invited Loria over to her family home to have a sleepover to celebrate the occasion, so Loria called home. She asked her father if she could stay the night at her best friend's and her father agreed. He told her to be home before 12 o'clock the next day and even though Loria promised to be, her family would end up waiting far longer than they ever could have imagined for her to come home. Early the next morning, around 5.30am, neighbours would call authorities to tell them that the Freeman home was on fire. Within half an hour, what had been a raging inferno was extinguished and Loria's parents had arrived, but things were not looking good. The coroners told them that they had already recovered one body, the body of Kathy Freeman, Ashley's mother, and Loria's car was still in the driveway with the keys in the ignition. First responders and investigators searched the home throughout the night, but they were unable to recover anyone else alive or even anyone else's remains. And things only took a turn for the darker when investigators discovered that Kathy Freeman had been murdered. She had been shot in the head, execution style, and the home had been intentionally set on fire when an accelerant had been left near a wood burner, possibly in the hopes of covering up the scene of the crime. With no one else around, investigators were left to wonder what exactly had happened that night and why the rest of the Freeman family and Loria Bible were still missing, and they came up with a chilling theory. They believed that Danny Freeman, Ashley's father, had killed his wife, for whatever reason, and set fire to his own home to cover the murder, and then ran away with both girls. The only question that was left was whether he had kidnapped and abducted the girls or if they had been part of the plot as well, but that theory did not sit right with Loria's family. They returned to the scene the very next day, hoping to find something that the investigators had missed and to hopefully find their daughter. But what they did find would take this case off in a totally different direction. Within five minutes of picking through what was left of the Freeman household, Loria's parents found the charred remains of Danny Freeman. Loria's mother, Lorene Bible, said in an interview with Unsolved Mysteries that he did not have anything from the upper teeth. All the way up to the top of his head was totally gone, like he'd been shot in the face. And investigators concluded that that was exactly what had happened to Danny Freeman, just as what had happened to his wife, Kathy. And the theory that Danny Freeman had killed his wife and taken the girls was put to bed. But that left only more and more questions. That same search of the home by Loria's parents had found Loria's purse with around $200 in cash still left inside, but no sight of either of the girls. If this had been a simple case of something like a robbery gone wrong, then surely her purse would be gone, or at least the money inside it. So what was the motive behind murdering the Freemans? Investigators came up with another theory. It was no secret that Danny and his daughter Ashley had a difficult relationship. They didn't get along at all, and with Ashley and Loria being lifelong friends, maybe they'd come up with a plan to kill Ashley's parents and run away together. But again, this did not sit right with Loria's family. 
Even if the girls had planned to kill Ashley's parents and run away, then why hadn't they taken the money from Loria's purse, or even her car that had been sitting in the driveway that night? It didn't quite make sense, and it only made less and less sense the longer the girls stayed missing. Eventually, when they had been gone for years, investigators changed their tune. They admitted that they didn't believe that two 16-year-old girls had managed to stay ahead of the law for this long all on their own, and then new theories began to emerge. Rumours in the community began to spread about the feud that had been happening between the Freemans and the local Craig County Police Department in Oklahoma. Just months before the fire, on the night of December 30th, 1999, the Freeman's son, Shane, had been shot and killed by officers while he'd been attempting to steal a car. An investigation into the shooting justified the actions of the officers that day, especially when it was revealed that Shane had also stolen a gun from a neighbour and had it on his person, but that didn't stop the tensions between the Freemans and the local authorities from growing. Danny Freeman still believed that the officers should have been held accountable for the death of his son, and he reported to friends and family that officers had tried to intimidate him into staying quiet about it on several occasions. Danny Freeman had gone as far to say that if anything was to happen to him, then it was the police department who would be behind it, and that was what people started to say the longer the case remained unsolved. The rumours got so bad that the entire department underwent polygraph tests, concluding that no one in the department had been involved in the Freemans' murders or the disappearance of the two girls. The rumour mill began again when serial killers Tommy Lynn Sells and Jeremy Jones both admitted to killing the girls. Tommy Lynn Sells recanted his confession, but it was only after a search of the mines that Jeremy Jones admitted to throwing the girls' bodies down, came back with nothing, that Jeremy Jones took back his confession. He then claimed that he'd admitted to their killings to get better food and phone privileges in prison, and that he actually knew nothing about what had happened to them. So it wouldn't be until 2018 that Loria's family and the community would finally get any real answers. A man named Ronnie Dean Busick was arrested and charged with four accounts of first-degree murder. He was one of three suspects named, but the other two, Warren Philip Welsh II and David Pennington, had already died in the 18 years that it would take for this case to finally go to trial. During those 18 years, several witnesses, including private investigators who had been hired by the Bible family, would come forward to claim that all three men had bragged about kidnapping, raping and murdering the two girls. According to witnesses and the prosecution's affidavit, Ronnie Dean Busick, Warren Philip Welsh and David Pennington had gone to the Freeman's home that night to either sell drugs or to settle a drug debt with Danny Freeman. Whatever happened next, whether it was a shakedown that went wrong or murdering the Freemans, had always been a part of the deal. Especially Loria Bible, it seems to be a case of being in the wrong place at the wrong time. The prosecution claimed that the girls walked into the home in the middle of Danny and Kathy's murders and the three men involved had to get rid of the witnesses. According to Ronnie, Warren Welsh murdered Danny and Kathy Freeman while he and David Pennington set fire to the home to cover the scene of the crime, and then all three men kidnapped the 16-year-old girls. The girls were then taken to a trailer where they were kept for several days, enduring hours of torture and assault, assault that the three men happily told others about. Witnesses reported finding pictures of the girls, bound and gagged and lying in a bed with Warren Welsh posing beside them, and a private investigator would actually find these pictures and hand them over to the police. Witnesses also described the men referring to the girls as, quote, two little bitches, before laughing and saying things like, yeah, we got them, didn't we? 
Both of these quotes would be used by the prosecution in their affidavit, but what the men meant by getting the girls was about their murder. According to Ronnie, he didn't know exactly what happened to them, but he thought after being kept in the trailer for several days, the girls were murdered and their bodies dumped in a nearby abandoned mine shaft, and that was all he could tell authorities about their location. Investigators and volunteers would do their best to find the girls' remains, even sending cameras down into the mine shafts, but neither of them were ever recovered. Ronnie Dean Busick pled guilty to accessory to first-degree murder for the deaths of Danny and Kathy Freeman, to arson for setting their home on fire, and to the abduction and assumed murders of Ashley Freeman and Loria Bible. Loria's family said they hoped that he would receive the death penalty, but in 2020, Ronnie would be sentenced to 15 years, 10 in prison and 5 on probation for all of his charges. He was 66 at the time of his arrest in 2018, meaning that there is a good chance that Ronnie will be out on the streets again at the end of his sentence, and in the meantime, Loria's family are still left without closure. The Bible family posted for Loria to be declared dead back in 2010, and with Ronnie pleading guilty to the girls' assumed murders, it's almost certain that they are actually dead, but for Loreen Bible, it's still not enough. Loreen talked about the difficulties of not knowing where her daughter is in an interview with the Washington Post, where she talked about how when a loved one dies, there's a gravesite to visit, and the comfort that comes with that, but she hasn't been able to find that same closure. For a while, she'd visit and put a wreath at the Freeman's driveway, but at this point, she just wants to know where her daughter is, no matter where that would be. Somebody knows where these girls are, she told reporters, and for me, I need to bring my daughter home. 